Okay guys, here is the next video, the Hasbro Marvel Legends series, Marvel Studios, the first 10 years. This is the Marvel Cinematic Universe 10th anniversary line of figures. Here is the Ant-Man set, which is the two-pack of Ant-Man and Yellow Jacket. This is one of the ones that I was most excited for because look at how awesome that Yellow Jacket figure is. The whole time when the movie came out and they had the only movie figure, Ant-Man, um, I was thinking, why wouldn't they do a yellow jacket? How awesome of a figure would that be? Um, and from the package, Hasbro did not disappoint. I'm extremely happy to, to be finally opening this thing up. I've had it for so long, but Comic Con came up, and then some of these other two packs. Uh, but here it is, finally going to be opening it up. So here we have um, the package. So you can see the Ant Man movie logo down here at the bottom right corner. You see the Hank Pym particle um, or Pym Tech logo. I think that was Pym Tech logo, but it's supposed to represent the Pym Particles Legend series up in this corner. Marvel Studios, the first 10 years over there. You see we have Ant Man, Paul Rudd, Head Sculpt, the two mini. Ant-Man and Yellow Jackets, the Yellow Jacket figure. Here on the side, we have some concept art um, looking pretty cool. So we actually have Falcon um, in front of the Helicarrier. So that um, is actually kind of odd now that I think about it. That's probably supposed to be Age of Ultron. No, well, what was the order? Age of Ultron came out, then Ant-Man came out, and then after Ant-Man was... Um, what was it after Ant-Man? Civil War? So is that supposed to be Civil War? There was no Helicarrier in Civil War. So maybe Falcon concept art showed him actually at the end battle of Age of Ultron. That's what I'm assuming that would be. Then you have Ant-Man uh, over there, Ant-Man down here. So really cool. Here we have a look at the back of the package. We'll take a look at the bios. We see we have the movie poster. This is number eight in the set. The bios read, Ant-Man, Scott Lang is enlisted by Hank Pym to suit up as Ant-Man and fight against the competing forces intending to use the incredible shrinking Pym particles for evil. Yellow Jacket, the new lead of Pym Industries, Darren Cross, threatens to sell his highly weaponized Yellow Jacket suit to the criminal organization Hydra. Okay, here in summary of the movie that was released in 2015, Ant-Man, when the government attempts to seize Hank Pym's Pym Particle shrinking technology for use in warfare, Pym trusts in the help of petty criminal Scott Lang to don the Ant-Man suit and strike back against corruption. Geared up as the half-inch hero, Lang must stop Pym Industries representative Darren Cross before he sells the shrinking technology to Hydra and enables them to create a new army of unstoppable shrinking secret weapons. Okay, and there's the UPC for anyone that is interested or needs it. Alright, now let's get this thing open and take a look at these figures. We'll spend only a short amount of time on Ant-Man. We'll just compare him to the previous release and show the differences. That's it. We're going to be really focusing on this Yellow Jacket figure since it's brand new. Let's get to it. Alright, and here are the figures out of the package. Um, and I'm telling you right now, this Yellow Jacket figure does not disappoint. The overall aesthetic of it, the sculpt, the paint apps, everything about it is pretty awesome everything just what i had hoped for in the yellow jacket figure so i'm very happy with it uh before we look at that yellow jacket figure though of course we are going to look at the ant-man figure uh but we are going to do that real quick i'm not going to spend a lot of time on it um so we're going to look at the figure because it is the same figure as the ultron wave ant-man so we'll actually move yellow jacket off to the side get those mini ones out of there so they are the same figure however the big um the big thing for this one was actually just going to be the the accurate the movie accurate head sculpt so on the the original release we know that based on concept art and this is actually more of the comic look that he actually has the open mouth helmet um now you can kind of get away at certain times the way it's opened up in the movie maybe that kind of works but um eh and then it's got the orange throughout, uh, throughout some parts of the figure. So not really super accurate or anything like that. So it's nice to get the updated so we get the full enclosed helmet, which is nice because that's, uh, um, you know, the movie accurate. Um, and then one big change that they made, and I'm not sure the real reason for this, um, is the t added texturing in the red. Um, that's actually throughout the entire figure. So wherever there's red on the figure, uh, the original release was smooth. 
but the new one it has the added texture to it and I'll get a close-up shot um, I'll zoom in so we, uh, so you can actually see kind of the difference and it reminds me of kind of that Killmonger um, that I just reviewed if you guys have watched that the Killmonger 2-pack um, the original release versus that 2-pack release and why can't I get this guy to stand up anybody else have this problem he doesn't want to stand stand up anyway let's take a close look so you can see the reds here um, very smooth and flat but here you have that texture I don't know I guess it feels like there's a little bit of texture um, so you could just see that kind of that um, that textured look which I do like because you know the the MCU suits costumes are have a very textured look to them um, so it's nice to see that in figure form you can see even on the arms the added texture there the shoulders the added texture the back of the figure the added texture and then the calves as well has that added texture even these red lines on the pants the legs the added textures on the new one too so pretty interesting don't know the exact reason why they did that uh, but they did take a close look at some of the differences you can see the the metal um, had a black wash over it to give it that um, that that metal look the new one does not have that so they give it that more metallic look to it the clean look um, there's red instead of the orange on the new one uh, the same goes for the belt you know the belt had all the added wash on the old one my orange was kind of crap paint there uh, but the new one there's none of that wash so it gives it a nice clean look and in the movie it definitely had the clean look versus um, that washed well, that washed out look anyway so the helmet is for the most part the same it's just the added you know enclosed helmet piece is really the only difference to it it looks like the sculpt it, they must have based the new one off of the same sculpt but then just made the corrections here in the face uh, because it's it's well, there's some differences to it. You can see there's a little bit more ridges on the old one versus the new one. So they definitely had to revisit the, the helmet completely on there. Uh, but I do like the way it looks, and I do like the fact that it is movie accurate. Uh, while I have these here, we'll take a look at the Paul Rudd heads. So you can see the new this two-pack comes with a Paul Rudd head. And I, kind of, I like this one, and I actually think this one might look like Paul Rudd a little bit more than the one that we got for Ant-Man and the Wasp and the Cole Obsidian Wave. Um, but this one's another, one of those where it's a male character, the digital face print doesn't hit the nail on the head quite right. Um, you really have to look on it straight on, and you could see Paul Rudd, uh, but it's definitely not the, not the best that they've given us. Um, it's, ah, it's really hard to say which one I like more. Uh, the smirk is just a nice touch that they did for it. Um, it. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, the hair is the same. So they actually use the hair from this uh, from the Cole Obsidian Wave. It's the same hair on this one. And it's actually glued on a little bit better. I don't know if I ever noticed this on my Ant-Man before, but it's got that line in the mold and the side line, the sideburns kind of coming up off of the head there. Uh, so the same hair. So that's interesting. The five o'clock shadow is done quite nice on here, though. I do like the way that came out looking. Uh, the fa the 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 paint apps are, are good. Um, it's just it, I think you just have to get it the right angle to really see Paul Rudd. So you turn it to the side, you can see it straight on. Yeah, it's not the greatest, but I do like it. And we'll take a look at putting it on the figure. So I'll pop the head off, pop it on there. And that actually looks really good. And this is actually how I'm debating on how I want to display this figure. If I want to display him with the Paul Rudd head, because my Ant-Man and the Wasp figure has the helmeted head, but I, <laughs> but it's the correct, the movie accurate helmet on this one. So how do I display it? What do you guys, let me know in the comments how you are going to display it or what you think I should display it. But for now, I think I'm going to go with the Paul Rudd head because I think that actually looks really good on the figure itself. Because there's plenty of times in the movie where he doesn't have the helmet on. So... That looks good. Let's take a look at the yellow jacket figure now. Here's something funny as I was just kind of posing, trying to pose this guy around um, to get move on to the yellow jacket. He comes with two left hands. How did how I didn't notice that before? I have no idea. But you could see the same hands, two left hands. What am I supposed to do with that, Hasbro? How does that pass QC? Now I haven't had 
very many issues like this in the past. A buddy of mine, Plastic Soul Collector, he had a Doc Ock with two left feet or two right feet. I've heard some other things about it. It's never actually happened to me, but here we are with this Ant-Man figure. Two left hands. I'm glad that the Yellow Jacket figure doesn't have any issues because that's the figure that I want the most. Um, but this, ah, come on Hasbro, how does that get by? Ah, oh, two left hands. But... I guess win some, lose some. But Hasbro, come on. That should not be missed. You guys should catch that. All right, the highlight of the two-pack is the Yellow Jacket figure. Really awesome. Before we take a close look and zoomed in look at the Yellow Jacket figure, I'm going to go over the articulation real quick. First, I'm going to remove this backpack, and I'll go over the articulation that uh, with that as, uh, as we kind of get the zoomed in look. But first, we'll go over the figure itself. So he can look all the way down, so that's good. Uh, he is a flying character, so he can look up oh, slightly, but then the head could pop off pretty easily, actually. Um, so not a whole lot there. Shoulders come all the way out, so good range of motion there. Full rotation, bicep swivel. He has a double jointed elbow, so a very good bend at the elbow. I really like the way uh, that works out, so good there. Uh, wrists swivel, and they do hinge on both sides as well. Right arm is the fist, left arm is the open hand, ab crunch moves down ever so slightly, but no real click in there. Uh, click back, that's good. Got a weird sculpt thing here in the in there, and I'll show you that as we get the zoomed in look. So not a whole lot of crunch down, surprisingly. Waist swivel, legs come out that far apart, not a huge amount, but I think it's decent enough. It works. Um, it's actually this legs kind of weird it comes out kind of far but it doesn't want to come sh it comes straight out and then there's a nice there's a little turn in there which is kind of odd the way it's shaped but I like the way they sculpted that um, there is a thigh cut there and it's kind of nice you get this sculpted black piece there that's over there so the this part this lower part of the leg actually sit, sits into it instead of just a standard cut you get a double jointed knee, no boot swivel, uh, but the foot hinges all the way up, hinges all the way down. You do get an ankle pivot, and this is one of those ones where uh, the foot's kind of on a ball right there that acts as the ankle, which um, it doesn't look the best when you really look at it closely, uh, but it really performs well and does what it's supposed to do. Now this back piece, it just ports right on into the back of the figure there. There's several points of articulation. So these parts, they don't move a whole lot. They just kind of, it swivels around and then it can kind of ratchet back and forth. I'm not sure what you can really get out of it. I know it's supposed to have blasters. I wish there was, you know, like maybe one more point of articulation right there. So when it's on him, it can rest over his shoulder uh, better, but it doesn't. These, there's actually several points of articulation. You point of our point of articulation here so it hinges that way you get another one right here so it can hinge at the 90 degree and then go back um, and then you got one more here which moves around like this so this rounded part that is the sculpt to it so no additional motion there but there's uh, definitely some solid motion there so as we poured it onto the back of the figure you can see here oh I guess it does go over his shoulder quite nicely um, but you know it's I guess weird how it fits around his head um, so you can't get it in motion that way you can turn it um, a little bit but I guess it just kind of depends on how you're gonna want to have it as it sits on him like that this you can kind of come around or you can get it to come up like this as I think at some point in the movie this is how it looked so that looks good right there like that now let's take a zoomed in look at the figure so I really like the sculpt of this figure. It just looks very good. Uh, one really cool thing, you see the yellow translucent plastic there as part of the lenses for the helmet. Now there's no Darren Cross head, but that's okay. I don't think it's necessary because at no point in the movie did he actually have the helmet off in the suit. I could be wrong on that. Do, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think he actually had his helmet, his face exposed in the yellow jacket suit at all. And I know that this suit was actually 100% CGI for the movie, whereas the Ant-Man suit was an actual practical suit. The yellow jacket was 100% CGI. Um, but that looks really good. I like the way that looks with the yellow translucent plastic there. Uh, very good. You got this honeycomb 
look to the sculpt throughout the suit. I think that comes off looking really good. The paint apps are applied quite nice, clean, no overspray or anything like that. Um, it's just a flat yellow, but it does look really good. There's some yellow throughout some parts of the figure. So this backpack piece, the, the stingers or whatever you would call them, a little bit of yellow throughout. Not a whole lot, but there's definitely some. You can see on the arm, he's going to have some going down. And then on the fingers, individually on the fingers, he's got some. You get that same honeycomb throughout the legs, which are nice. And then here I was telling you about that. See, it's not a straight thigh cut. It's sculpted in so that leg actually fits in there because this black piece actually you could see rests over some of that yellow and the honeycomb and the honeycomb goes all the way down the leg um, down into the foot you get a little bit of yellow as well so a very good looking figure with the backpack off though it is all black not a whole lot there but of course you're not going to display the figure like this you're going to display it with this backpack on and again it just ports into the back like so so there it is there is the yellow jacket figure. That thing looks awesome. All right, guys, there is my review on this two pack. Um, awesome two pack. I do highly recommend it because this yellow jacket figure is awesome. For all you MCU movie collectors and fans out there, I know you're going to want to pick this up because we've been wanting movie villains because we hardly get any. And finally, with the first 10 years line, uh, we've gotten Ronan, Mandarin. We'll get a new Thanos, even though we already have Thanos. Um, so at least we get some added villains, so it's kind of nice. But this yellow jacket figure, awesome. But again, disappointed in Hasbro. Come on, two left hands? How do you let that slip by? I'm sure mine is going to be one of however many having that problem. I'm sure yours won't have that issue. But if you see these in store, double check, because you never know how those hands can really work out. I wish I would have checked. I didn't. But I think I should be paying a little bit more close attention to that. Uh, but to Hasbro, we shouldn't have to do that. We should be able to just grab one off the shelf and be happy with it and satisfied with it. And unfortunately, that kind of thing, it's not good. But awesome set nonetheless. You know, these premium MCU 10th anniversary figures are higher price points. So $49.99 for this two-pack. Um, they are, I believe, hitting Target stores now, maybe some Walmart stores, uh, but definitely all over the place online you can get this two-pack. So really awesome. I do highly recommend. If you guys have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. Hit that thumbs up if you guys liked the video. If you haven't subscribed, please do so now. As always, I'd like to thank you for watching.